Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everyone. Uh, welcome to lecture number 4 uh, of Images, Imaginations and Cultures. This lecture is titled Photographs or Images as Performative Spaces. So in this lecture, we would be looking at two fundamental concepts for um, as, as proposed in the title of the lecture is one is photographs, one is the idea of photographs as images. And the second is the idea of space. Second is the idea of space as performative spaces. So we will see, we'll start with the um, concept of photographs as images. Um, you know, what is the nature of photographs? Uh, you know, how can photographs be objectified? So we know we, you know, photograph is, um, you know, a fairly, uh, you know, universal sense of cultural practice. Um, it probably was not universal when it started, but it has now become universal. And um, for the purposes of this lecture, we see that photographs are images, they are objects, and therefore, there's a sense of materiality attached to that. So when we say that something is an object, um, you know, there is a sense of, you know, tangibility. There's a, there's a sense of materiality that is attached. Um, and, you know, ideas of photographs would explore institutional, political, religious, domestic spheres, across time and space. So time and space is something that we looked at in the first lecture also. Um, and, and in this lecture, we are going to build on the concept of space a little more. And um, we do see that photographs, if we unpack uh, the studying of photograph, we do see, um, you know, photographs have physical properties. And the nature of their use uh, actually renders them their objectiveness. The, um, the cultural formation in which photographs function, you know, the purposes of their um, use, um, you know, renders their objectness. So what is important here for us is to acknowledge that we are talking about, uh, you know, photographs not just as images, but also as um, objects. So if you consider this quote by Barthes, um, and we'll then come to unpacking the quote. Um, quote, the, pho the photograph was very old. The corners were blunted from having been pasted in an album. The sepia print had faded, and the picture just managed to show two children standing together at the end of a little wooden bridge in a glassed-in conservatory, what was called a winter garden in those days. So you see, um, you know, the description of a photograph, um, you know, as you see here, um, is not just about the photograph itself. It is about people, it is about objects, it is about processes that are taking place as part of this uh, photograph. So photographs are material objects, and we also see that there is a background narrative that goes on behind describing a photograph, behind the purpose of a photograph. So um, one example I would direct you to um, if you are interested, and this is um, I think available online, is um, you go to the India Memory Project website and you can see, you can actually trace, uh, you know, the history of the Indian subcontinent um, via various images that have been uploaded um, through personal, um, you know, connections and, and this, this is, this is perhaps one of the best uh, digital archival resources that we have in current times of, on images and, you know, 
most of these images uh, of the Indian Memory Project, uh, if not all of them, actually talk about photographs as performative spaces. So you take um, you know any uh, number, any any photograph, you choose any number of photographs from the archive of the Indian Memory Project, and you see. Uh, you know, there's some sort of a performance, there's some sort of a negotiation that is, uh, you know, so, sort of carried on in that photograph um, um, that you see on the on digital archive. So, um, this is just an example for you to uh, look, um, you know, a little more in this regard. Um, but in the case of uh, coming back to the questions of uh, photographs, um, so one of the attributes of photograph is that photographs are three dimensional. And here we are talking about photographs as both images and physical objects that exist in time and space and um, thus in social and cultural experience. So we are talking about space um, as you can see um, you know, over and over again. And uh, you know, in a minute, I will take you through um, a more conceptual grounding of space uh, that will help us understand how photographs are performative spaces. Um, but photographs are also subjective, and they are embodied. That they are in a uh, very contextualized uh, setting that is giving us a sense of uh, the time and space. Um, Space as an integral concept of photographs is very important to um, acknowledge here. And photographs are consumed in a visual act, an absorbing image and object together, but privileging the former becomes detached from the functional context of materiality. So, um, what is important here is to um, acknowledge is that, um, you know, in the context, in the content of a photograph, um, you have multiple contents. For example, you have an image content. If you are looking at a photograph, you have the first thing possibly you are looking at um, is the image, is what the photograph is about. So that is the first idea, that is the first content of a photograph. The second content, which is you know probably not the first thing that we notice when we look at a photograph is. Um, the physical attributes of a photograph that influence the image content. So, the questions of, um, you know, the attributes that influence, for, you know, the questions of why does that image that we are seeing exist. So, what you, what usually used to happen previously is when you looked at a photograph, you know, the study of the image. Um, was the most important function. You know, the study of the image was uh, most important, and that is why pro probably why photographs were collected, they were purchased, they were exchanged, they were gifted, um, and you know, the importance of the photograph remained with the image content and just the image content. But with the evolution of the study of photography and photographs um, through multi multiple uh, you know disciplinary lenses. We see that the other attribute, that is the attributes that govern, you know, why does the photograph of whatever we are looking at exist, um, that is increasingly becoming important. That is questioning, um, you know, the the you know sort of choice, the influence behind the existence of that image, existence of that photograph is becoming increasingly important and it is also giving us a methodological intervention, also giving us a methodological question to study the existence and the retention of that photograph as an image. So this is uh, uh, what, is, uh, what is understood to be the three dimensional of uh, the, the, the photograph, three dimensional of the uh, image. Um, and this is, um, you know, the the methodological focus is important. Uh, that, you know, we are looking at photographs as a site of meaning. Also, that you know, what sort of negotiations are going on within that photograph, um, and also, uh, you know, it is it it gives us a sense of time and space of of wherever the photograph was taken. 
So, uh, so on the whole, uh, you know, what we are looking at when we are looking at a photograph, we are looking at these other factors also and not just the image content of the photograph. So, when we say that, um, you know, photographs are performative spaces, just to give you a background on space, you know, how did the idea of space evolve, um, particularly in social sciences, and what do we mean when we say that images or photographs, um, as examples, are performative uh, spaces. So, if you look at the history of uh, space, the concept of space, um, you know, has gone through various avenues in humanities, in social sciences, in fundamental sciences. And, you know, the various journeys of the concept of space has arrived at a position, particularly in social science, um, in sociology, in geography, in uh, anthropology, where um, social space is talked about as a socially constructed space that, um, you know, the, the very nature of social space that we talk about is socially constructed. So, I will get on to a little more detail on this in my next few slides, but before I go there, uh, I also want to talk about the journey of space, uh, you know, from prehistoric uh, um, you know, debates into contemporary and the future ahead, we are talking about social space in the digital age also. So, we are talking about the changing nature of uh, space, um, particularly when we hear, uh, you know, you know uh, images in terms of augmented reality, images in terms of virtual reality, images in terms of mixed reality. So, how has the nature of photographs, how has the nature of images um, changed with regard to changing nature of um, space in the digital age is also something that we need to ponder and this is something that I would also like you to, um, you know, push your thinking in that direction. So, going back to the idea of space, um, we see that, uh, you know, I'll just go back uh, to my previous slide, that if you are interested to know, uh, you know, you know, read a little deeper into uh, this idea of space, um, you can look up uh, Henry Lefebvre's uh, text on the production of space. That, um, you know, that space is an idea of any pre-existing space in which things are embedded does not exist. And so, um, the very idea of space is that it is undergoing continual construction, that space is as fluid a sense of being, a sense of term, as is, um, you know, any social variable, any social category as has been evolving. So, space is, uh, you know, a starting point to understand space. Now, if you relate to the idea of images, if you relate to the idea of photographs, is that you know, that space is not a pre-given state, a space. And so, what it leads to is a relational view of space, that not as a container within which the world proceeds, but as a co-product of those proceedings. So, when you look at a photograph, um, you are not just looking at the image content, you are also looking at a social space that is being negotiated in that area and that social space is fluid. So, that social space is also undergoing change and this is something that comes from a classic understanding of social ideas of space and this is something that um, I think you will find helpful as you look at images as performative uh, spaces. So, from Henry Lefebvre's work, we also uh, get to the point that the idea of space, um, you know, gives us a conceptual triad. So, it gives us three points um, along and across which we can build on our conceptualization of space and, um, you know, we can bring that idea to, um, to studying uh, images uh, photographs by, ex by example. 
So, the first um, of these triads uh, that Lefebvre talks about is um, a special practice which embraces production and reproduction and the particular locations and spatial sets characteristic of each social formation. Spatial practice ensures continuity and some degree of cohesion in terms of social space and of each member of a given society's relationship to that space, this cohesion implies a guaranteed level of competence and a, and a specific level of performance. So, in a nutshell, the idea of praxis, the idea of fluidity, um, you know, brings in the idea of continuity within a social space and that is what spatial practice is talking about. The second of the triad is representations of space, which are tied to the relations of production and to the order which those relations impose and hence to knowledge, to signs, to codes and to frontal relations. So, representations of space give us, uh, you know, in a way a symbolic meaning towards um, understanding space. And, um, you know, this all translates to the fluidity, the nature of fluidity um, that photographs uh, put forward with uh, in front of us. And the third of the conceptual triad that uh, Lefebvre proposes is representational spaces where embodying complex symbolisms, sometimes coded, sometimes not linked to the clandestine or underground side of social life as also to art which may come eventually to be defined less as a code of space than as a code of representational spaces. So, representational uh, spaces are the ultimate forms of um, you know symbolism, ultimate forms of symbolic um, identities of spaces that um, you know that characterizes that re that represents any space and so if you want to understand photographs uh, you know what sort of performance what sort of negotiations are carried on in a particular image um, you know you may find any or all of these conceptual um, elements uh, on space uh, you know helpful for your understanding so from that triad if we want to look at the various types of images um, and the nature of spaces that are attached to you know each type of these images. Um, we see um, starting with empirical constructions, we see maps um, you know which which can be images which can be you know images of maps to GIS and GPS global information system and, and global positioning systems. So, the, you know from cartography to the digital, um, we see empirical constructions of images and so, you know what is reflected on paper is also reflected on the digital screen, but the nature of space has changed from the paper to the digital. And so, with the changing nature of space, uh, the question now is how has viewing of that image changed. Um, the second type of uh, space is networked space um, and here we are talking about the various scales and levels of um, space. Um, the third form which is most important for us um, for this lecture is image space and in image space um, you know, we use examples of paintings, photographs, portraits and postcards, etc. Um, and for each of these, um, you know, nature of image, you know, the nature of space is also very different. So, you know, paintings would have a very different social space than photographs um, than portraits and postcards and mind you this, this social space is not just negotiated by the image itself. It is also talking to the nature of viewers, you know, there is a relationship between spectators, viewers um, who are looking at the photograph, at, at the postcard um, and you know what sort of social space is negotiated in that regard. Um, and the fourth type of uh, space in this regard is place space. 
So, what is the relationship, if any, between what we understand to be space and what we understand to be place? And finally, in the digital um, turn of things, um, you know, we have the advent of the digital space, um, which I will talk about also, you know, how do we, you know, deal with images in the digital space? Um, and then, um, you know, the birth of the science um, of the evolving nature of the science of space in that regard. So, just to revisit, um, you know, a concept that uh, I have talked about previously also is that space and time are interrelated. So, space was treated as the dead the fixed, the undialectical, the immobile. Time on the contrary was richness, fecundity, life, dialectic and this was Foucault talking in 1980. So, what renders space the fluidity, what renders space the uh, negotiation power is time and the social production of space and the restless formation and reformation of geographical landscapes social being actively emplaced in space and time in an explicitly historical and geographical contextualization. So, I mean what we talked about previously also is that you know time and space are interrelated, they are not mutually exclusive, but they are interwoven. So, both time and space need to be understood in their in, you know in their uh, cohesiveness in their togetherness. And so, when we look at images, you know, if we are trying to make meaning of the image space, for example, we cannot afford not to look at time in that image also. So, how do we look at time in an image? And you know, the image that you see on the top of my screen is an image of a historical setting as you can see from the image. The image that you see on the top of my screen is the image of a historical setting as you can see. Um, and then if there comes questions of um, you know space in this in this image in this photograph. So, you know space is a social construct and you know what you make meaning of a space is socially constructed. Uh, the social is spatially constructed, social space is not static, but dynamic, space implies power and symbolism and social space implies multiplicity of spaces. So, you can see um, all of these parameters, all of these negotiations, um, if you take this image for example, you can see that uh, you know there is a sense of dynamism that is going on in this photograph. There is a sense of power and symbolism that is going on in this photograph. There is a sense of multiplicity of spaces that is going on in this photograph. So, this is in a, um, you know, in, a, in a very, very brief form how um, space is, um, you know, socially constructed, how spaces are performative in nature in, you know, in a given photograph. So, coming back to the question of space versus place, um, there is a distinction between um, you know the two between what is a space and a place. And for example, in this um, image that you see the blue city uh, which is uh, um, in Rajasthan, um, you do see that the this this the, you know this image gives us a sense of space you know in terms of uh, you know it is a it is an urban landscape, it is a space that we see in the photograph but it also gives us a sense of place you know i can look at this image and say it is the blue city and so according to dorian massey if you read massey you will see um, you know massey defines um, you know for a for a space to become place it takes an event so an event defines whether a space is becoming a place and this is important when you particularly look at uh, you know images such as this. Places um, are discursive 
constructions. So, you know, place, as I was saying, place, you know, it takes an event, whether it's experience, whether it's memory, whether it's desire, whether it's identity, you know, place becomes, um, you know, a product of discursive construction um, to that matter. Um, so this, uh, you know, example hopefully has provided you with an idea that one is how do we understand the spatial fluidity, the, the fluid nature of space in a given photograph, in a given image, that's number one. And number two is how do we understand, um, you know, if we are looking at just space, socially constructed space, or, um, you know, what is giving us a sense of place in that photograph. So, and, and as Massey would point out, you know, these events of a place, um, you know, can be in the form of how you experience a space or how you keep your space in your memory, you know, how you memorize your um, experience, um, your desire to uh, identify with that space or identity, you know, that goes behind the scene to, um, you know, towards that experiential of uh, space. So now I'm going to transition into talking about um, a couple of theoretical frameworks that possibly will help us to understand how social spaces have evolved and, um, and what goes behind the scene, um, you know, to understand how these spaces are negotiated in images um, such as uh, photographs. So, since we were talking about cities in the previous slide, I'll stay with the example of city. Um, but before I go to more examples, let me uh, talk about, uh, you know, a little more about social construction of place um, and bring the concept of habitus um, that was uh, put forward by Pierre Bourdieu, uh, French sociologist. Um, and and this idea of uh, habitus is derived from the Latin term um, habare, meaning to have or to hold. Um, and Bourdieu's central question behind, um, you know, coining the term habitus is how is human action regulated? So Bourdieu is talking from uh, his point of view of rational choice that, you know, our cultural norms, our practices which we attach meanings to, um, our physical enactment of cultural capital, um, to the deeply ingrained habits, skills and dispositions that we possess due to our life experiences, all of which contribute, um, you know, forming our habitus, which in turn allows us to successfully navigate social environments. And um, you know, habitus also extends to our taste for cultural objects such as art, food and clothing. So imagine um, you are looking at a photograph of any of these, um, you know, cultural objects. Imagine you're looking at a photograph of art or food or clothing or city or any place. and Imagine now bringing in your ideas as understood through Bourdieu's uh, lens of habitus that what are the cultural norms, what are the symbolic meanings that are attached to the image that I'm looking at? What are the symbolic meanings that went behind the scene to produce that photograph? So habitus, um, you know, gives us a very helpful uh, lens to view the the nature of performative spaces um, within uh, a given photograph. Um, as you can see on the diagram, um, the the function of the habitus. Um, so along the vertical axis, along the y axis, as you can see. Um, the, we are talking about very deep structures in societies, as I was telling in my introductory lecture also, um, is that we talk, you know, our, our actions are not beyond the society. They are embedded within the larger, um, you know, social power dynamics within the society and we are, 
you know, we have been governed by these structural settings, which of course have been evolving through time and space. So, the idea of habitus is situated in the network of these deep structures, their transformations, um, their natures of being subjective or objective. So, we are talking about these, um, you know, evolution of categories from you know, uh, deep structures of society. And then we are also talking about social structures that are influencing the sense of habitus. So, Bourdieu's habitus actually again gives us a wonderful lens to look at, particularly if you are looking at artwork, particularly if you are looking at cultural practices, particularly if you are looking at, um, you know, food, uh, cultural practices around food, belief systems. Um, you know, what are these social dynamics, what are these habitus informing practices that have gone behind, uh, you know, seeing what we are looking at. The second uh, theorist I would like to bring in here to understand, uh, you know, the nature of place, um, particularly images when we look at. Um, is Doreen Massey, geographer, um, that you know, she is asking this very question, what are the social processes that construct a place? We have seen in a few slides uh, back that you know, it takes an event for a space to become a place. And so, um, for example, you know, when we travel, uh, you know, we take pictures um, wherever, we try to take pictures wherever we go. How do we choose which picture are we going to take? I mean, in the pre-digital age, the number of pictures that a traveler could take was limited. Of course, with the advent of the digital, you know, the numbers are no longer a restriction, but still, um, you know, the decision to, you know, pause during your travel and to take a picture is still a decision. And so, you know, and, and why do you take a decision, you know, to take a photograph of a place or a, or, or, or a practice or a cultural um, practice? So, that is deeply informed by um, not just habitus, but also the social processes that construct a place. And Massey uses the concept of a gendered space, uh, for example, that gender relations vary over space. And spaces are symbolically gendered. Some places are marked by physical exclusion, for example, religious places. And so, Massey uses, um, you know, gendered spaces as an example to show that, uh, you know, a given space can be translated to a, a place by virtue of a social process. So, for example, if you um, if you look at any particular photograph or image that talks about, um, you know, practice of a belief system, that talks about a cultural process, you know, um, you would immediately be able to tell that why is it that, um, you know, this photograph is important. Because now you know, um, you know, the lens that you would be uh, carrying with you, you know, either it's, um, you know, looking through Bourdieu's habitus or looking through masses, um, you know, social construction of space or place um, that you need to look at. So, um, these are, um, you know, some of the widely used uh, images that we see, um, you know, on the internet or around us. So, these are uh, some of the widely used um, photographs that we see around us um, that, um, you know, give us a sense of space and place. Um, for example, if we look at photographs or images um, of post-industrial global cities, you know, they are marked by, you know, very distinct forms of architecture, high-rise central business districts. Um, they are also marked by spaces of ethnicity, ethnic enclaves. Um, and we see Saskia Sassen has done a lot of uh, research on, um, you know, the evolution of global cities and the images, the photographs, um, the sort of uh, mental images also that are attached to the growth of global cities. Um, 
And she talks about one represents technological advance, that is the high rise CBDs, and the other economic and cultural backwaters, that is the spaces of ethnicity. So, um, so, it, so it is also important not just to acknowledge the different types of spaces that has given um, you know, birth the, as a result of this, but also the nature of power inscribed on urban landscapes. So, you know, if you look at a photograph of an urban or a row, um, you know, semi-urban sort of a landscape, uh, you know, you would immediately be able to tell um, what sort of power dynamics are going on, um, you know, in that image, what sort of power dynamics are inscribed on the urban landscape. Um, we see, um, you know, symbolic um, elements um, in forms of images, in forms of, uh, you know, um, economics of the city. Um, for example, you know, we do see representations and readings of social groups. Um, so, if you are, you know, walking down the road and you see the symbolic, um, you know, images, you immediately know, uh, you know, what these uh, would refer to. And, uh, you know, um, we do see how they have a functional perspective that, you know, cities use culture as an economic base and uh, that the power of culture is related to aesthetics um, also. So, um, I'm just using these examples to um, exemplify Bourdieu's and Massey's ideas of the habitus and uh, the sense of uh, place uh, respectively. Um, and we also see how images, how photographs, um, you know, um, become cultural brandings of places also. So, if you look at a photograph of a heritage architecture, for example, um, you know, it brings with it a sense of cultural branding. It brings with it a sense of symbolic capital of um, that space, of that um, area. Um, and, you know, particularly for the heritage, uh, you know, space, we do see that, uh, you know, it's talking about, um, you know, various forms of heritage spaces like cultural, like natural, like built um, sort of heritage spaces. Um, and I go back to the questions of time and space again, that um, we are not just looking at um, a heritage architecture when we are looking at a photograph of a heritage architecture. We are looking at time, we are looking at space, we are looking at people, um, we are also looking at cultural practices within the same photograph. And so, uh, uh, in, you know, the questions of what the image contains versus uh, the, the what the image does not contain but is very much present there. Um, is the critical question to explore. Um, and we also have questions of um, cyberspace, um, which is a conceptual spaceless place where words, human relationships, data, wealth, status and power are manifest by people using computer mediated communications technology. So, cyberspace is another, you know, very, very different type of space that we talk about nowadays. Um, and then, um, you know, what do we do with images um, uh, that are found, uh, you know, digital or, or in the cyber space. So, there are, you know, uh, you know, evolving natures of methodology that are coming up, um, how to do, uh, you know, research with digital photography, with, uh, you know, digital images, for example, and I gave you an example of the Indian Memory Project, um, the digital archive uh, at the start of this lecture, um, and that is, um, you know, one of the first forms of digital archive, at least we see in this country. Um, and, you know, more and more such digital archives are coming up, people are working towards uh, building digital archives. Um, and then um, also, you know, dealing with the politics of building archives and digital archives. Because when you, for example, when you put a photograph um, on the digital archive, um, you, you know, there's a decision making that goes behind the scene. You know, you choose to archive a photograph 
or you do not choose to photo archive a photograph. So, this decision is guided by several factors and that is uh, you know that is also an important area of inquiry um, regarding the politics of archive. Um, so, um, extending on the idea of cyberspace um, and cities. So, if we look at images of um, you know cities that are information super highway, you know you look at images and you are immediately able to say um, the the um, you know form and nature of the urban setting, the form and nature of the space that you see in that photograph. Um, the the nature of networks that you see within that photograph, um, etc. So with that, um, I will now take you to the last part of this lecture. Um, and as I was mentioning about uh, the digital turn in um, in dealing with images, dealing with photographs. Um, and dealing with the idea of digital space. So, um, I will walk you through a few examples of digital images, digital geographies of space and place um, and then I will also keep referring to what we have discussed um, in the uh, previous part of this uh, lecture. So, um, I exemplified this with a project um, that was uh, sponsored by the government of India. Um, this is from the book Digital Humpy. Preserving Indian Cultural Heritage um, that was published in 2017. Um, it's edited by Malik et al. So, um, if you are familiar with the uh, with the um, uh, history of Hampi, um, so this is this project is an effort to um, digitize um, Hampi in the context of its preservation, conservation, um, and and it's part of an Indian digital heritage project. So, um, the our concern here is so and I draw some examples from this work um, from Digital Humpy. Um, if you can see on the screen um, that you know whatever the project aimed to do is restore is, is to restore it digitally. And I am talking about images here. If you look at the, ori the leftmost image, um, the input image that is original, um, uh, uh, possibly you know a carpet or a mat, um, and then processed output digitally restored um, in its digital image form, right. In the middle set of images, you see digital annotation by artifacts of artifacts by experts. So, you see um, you know a story being inscribed possibly on the walls um, of temples and then you know they are taking into their digital image format and then you know they have digital annotation attached to their uh, whatever is the processes happening in the stories that you see the murals that you see. Um, and likewise, in the third one to the uh, rightmost part of your screen, you see the digital restoration of um, uh, the uh, Virabhadra Swami temple, uh, the Lapakshi temple, um, and then uh, you see the digitally Im restored images um, of that. So, it is not just that we are talking about the nature, the changing nature of space here. Um, from analog to digital. We are also talking about a heavily interdisciplinary body of research um, that, that went behind the scene to arrive as, at this destination. So, you know you are talking about um, you know interdisciplinarity in the form of you know when historians, archaeologists, computer scientists and engineers um, you know all come together, uh, sociologists you know all come together to produce what are you seeing here? And you know the intention of bringing this example to you is that um, the study of photographs, the study of images have traveled a long journey and they are traveling a very interesting journey at this digital moment. So, um, if you are interested uh, you know in this uh, you know uh, area of inquiry, I encourage you to read a little more on um, the digital turn in sociology and the digital turn in photography also. 
to look at, you know, how do the outcomes change and why do the outcomes uh, change. <clears throat> so, in this, uh, um, you know, in this example that I have just talked about, um, you know, if, if we are to bring in the concepts of habitus, for example, you know, habitus as we saw um, in Bourdieu's way of habitus. Um, you know, what are the cultural forms, you know, what are the cultural practices that have informed, um, you know, these, these images that we are looking at. Now, uh, without restoration, it would ha not have been, you know, possible to actually get a complete picture. So, um, you know, we do need projects, um, you know, like this, we do need cultural inquiry like this to um, tell us a little more about, um, you know, what goes on behind the scene of, of a photograph or an image. This is also from the same project uh, which talks about um, habitus and social spaces being negotiated um, from the world, from the project Digital Humpy. Um, and you see across the screen, particularly if you look at um, the second set of images um, from your left, um, the methodology for reconstructions of social life and bizarre scenarios. And you see that how clothing, um, you know, from that era was reconstructed and, you know, and restored as, as digital um, images. So, um, you know, one point is, you know, restoring, um, you know, heritage, conserving heritage. The other uh, part of this inquiry is also preserving um, knowledge production. You know, how, how, you know, what do we know about clothing and, you know, what other things apart from clothing do we know about cultural practices of Humpy, um, you know, given, given that uh, it's a historical um, heritage. So, we do see a lot of work has been done, particularly in this uh, project uh, <clears throat> that looks at restoring of, um, you know, clothing styles, etc. And the images that you see are all digitally produced um, images. So, going back to our basic questions is that we are looking at, um, you know, something that is produced, um, you know, born digital, that is, uh, that is produced in a digital space. Um, and the third um, set of uh, images that you see here again from um, Digital Humpy is that uh, you are looking at mapping of bazaar activities um, to structures, right? So, you, you are looking at, um, you know, what happens when you inject people into, um, you know, the architectural images. Um, and this is all done digitally, I am telling you. So, you know, you are recreating the habitus, you are recreating the social setting, but on a digital space. And this is all the more interesting because, um, you know, you are recreating a historical setting and, you know, uh, trying to achieve, uh, you know, what it should be, uh, how it was previously. But you are still rendering, you know, the platform, the space to be digital. So, um, you know, and this is again going back to the point that when we look at images, uh, you know, please keep in mind what is the form and shape of the space that you are looking at. We are looking at, uh, if you are looking at the image in the center of uh, the screen um, where, you know, you see provision or free feeding house for Brahmins were done during Vijayanagara period. Um, so, you know, you are actually looking at a cultural practice, recreation um, of a cultural practice through an image produced in the digital space. So, just to drive home the fact that we are talking about digital geographies of space and place. So, you know, you know, if you are interested to explore in this area, you can look up uh, the China Biographical Database Project, which has a lot of images in digital spaces um, that, 
uh, you know, speak to the digital geographies that speak to what happens when photographs, um, you know, go digital, that when images go digital. Um, we are also talking about the current age of GIS and deep mapping, um, uh, which is also, you know, an image in its digital form um, that, that is, um, you know, of utmost importance to this discussion. Um, so, what is deep mapping? A deep map is a multi-layered digital cartographic representation that allows map creators to annotate and illustrate geographical and social space in various ways, often using multimedia elements, commenting and superimposable layers. Deep maps may integrate aspirational or imaginary space and be collaborative open-ended workspaces. So, the spatial humanities turn, you know, the, the study of space in the context of images, um, you know, has been of, you know, central importance when we talk of, uh, you know, deep mapping, when we talk of um, uh, GIS and new forms of images. And of course, um, you know, when I talk of AR and VR, you know, the, the augmented reality, the virtual realities and mixed realities that are created through images in digital spaces um, is, uh, is very, very central to our um, life and practices um, now. So, I, I bring back these two examples from Digital Humpy again to you uh, that, you know, we see bizarre street animation in, in, in through an environmental modeling um, motion blur sort of uh, animation here. Um, and, uh, you know, we, for, for, for a social scientist, what is interesting is that you look at this image that is again, you know, digitally produced and talking of, um, a habitus, talking of a moment of habitus um, that we see in this uh, photograph. For example, um, you are experiencing a bazaar street animation, um, you know, a bazaar street experience through this animation that has been produced um, here. Um, and also going back to the clothing example to the right side of your screen, um, you know, you're looking at uh, you know, the evolution of Vijayanagara clothing culture and terms, you're looking at male clothing um, here um, and that recreation. So, the images that were reconstructed um, in digital spaces were, um, you know, uh, trying to revive or, you know, restore the clothing culture, um, the male clothing culture. Um, you know, of that time. And of course, you can see the amount, the scale of research that has gone behind producing such an image um, and, and its annotation. So, uh, this is something that, um, you know, you, uh, you can explore if you are, um, you know, uh, interested to study uh, visual uh, images in digital spaces. And, um, Finally, I would um, like to um, end with an example that uh, again speaks to questions of uh, AR, VR, XR and questions of, uh, you know, dealing with habitus, dealing with cultural practices uh, in, in, in the digital, um, you know, uh, space. Um, this is an example from the virtual Harlem project by Professor Brian Carter. Um, from Arizona, University of Arizona. Um, and here, um, uh, you can see the link I've given below uh, here. If you go to his uh, website and look up his research projects. So, Virtual Harlem Project has been uh, uh, one, of, uh, one of the pioneers in the digital turn of images, digital turn of photography um, in that sense. And here, uh, Carter and his uh, team of students actually recreated um, the, um, you know, the moments of Harlem Renaissance of 1920s, 30s um, uh, US um, context. And they take us to the historical moment through AR and VR. Um, they re recreate those images, they recreate those um, experiences through images um, to that moment. And uh, you, as a result, again, can be part of that uh, 
dynamic you as a as a person can be included in that habitus of that cultural practice that has been uh, you know behind uh, going behind the scene for creating um, virtual Harlem. So, um, driving home uh, the fact here is that we have looked at in this lecture, we have looked at photographs, you know, the nature of photographs, their materiality, their objectness, um, and also we have looked at, um, you know, photographs as images um, and their performative uh, spaces. So, the idea of photograph, the idea of image needs to be situated in the process of the social space that is being created. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, this is coming from, um, you know, the, the questions of the questions of fluidity in terms of um, social space. And, you know, I want to emphasize on the centrality and complexity of social meaning um, in relation to objects and their, uh, you know, sociability in terms of images um, uh, in, in this um, context. So, um, I hope you would find this helpful. I would urge you to, if you are interested in this line of inquiry, um, looking at uh, spaces and photographs, um, you know, you can look up a little more on Bourdieu's work, you can look up more on Massey's work, um, and you can read up a little more on the digital turn um, in images um, and photographs. So, with that I would like to conclude this lecture. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps uh, the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I will be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I am going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I will be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled in all of its adaptations almost as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone wiet and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? 
asked the master to death. And death replied, it was not a threatening gesture, rather it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today, because this evening I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.